engineer's idea of a six catch up title. Yes, definitely. We didn't have time to we were cool titles. Sorry about that, guys. Um, <laughs> we spent most of our time trying to work out exactly what we wanted to build in the end. Um, so, the original pitch was to come up with a genericized version of the support model to be deployed by anyone who, wanted, who had a sort of dedicated service um, that might be available, say, a GP practice or somebody had a dedicated, in these examples, we would say maybe imaging for maybe uh, uh, doing an echocardiogram or specialist podiatry service at home. And that might be available to a to all the local GP, GP centers in the area or a, a PCM. And it's how to make that available to all these different specialties. Um, one of the examples we originally worked through on this one was, uh, again, imaging, an echocardiogram service that all the local GP practices in the area were using. Um, but to actually use it, you would have to email the company supplier list of a patient you'd like to get booked onto a service. They, you would also have to send over all the details about those patients. They would then send back a list of all the uh, details you have to book it onto your own systems. And then if a patient cancelled, you'd have to feed that back. And each of the different GP practices were sort of doing their own process around this to complete, complete the work. So that's just one of the areas we've looked at. And in my past experience, I've been working on other systems where the general concept is you have a service in the middle, which is your hub, that all the different areas around that are obviously pass passing their patients into. And it's how we can stop basically reinventing the wheel every time and make it more generic. So these are just some of the examples of services we mentioned, especially for dietary, mental health, tertiary services, hospital specialties on the hub side. And then when we move into what is a spoke, it can be any local organization looking for unique or specialized services um, as for well patients. So again, it might be with GP practices or PCNs or pharmacies or district general hospitals if you're talking about a tertiary service at the hospital. Um, so but again, an example from my past would be something like a, uh, a coronary angiography that would be undertaken at a specialist tertiary center, and the DGHs would then all feed straight in, collect the information they need to do to then feed back and transfer a patient over for care. So again, I've seen this model, and I'm sure we all have, in the patterns that we see in uh, patient care. Um, so again, what we kind of come up with on this side of the is to implement a very generic system, as generic as we can actually get it, um, so that organisations can register themselves, register themselves on the system. Each organisation can be both a hub, where they're supplying the service, or a spoke, where they're actually requesting the services. Each service can actually be restricted by either area, postcode, PCN, or specific spokes that you've actually identified. And um, when it comes to the actual spokes themselves, they can search for the services that are, and will show the ones that are in their area, whether they can actually access the services is also shown and they can either refer themselves onto the services directly or request access and have that set up. So each service can be defined with uh, including criteria, but then, so if you have set up a service for your organization, they have five services, and you can say, oh, for this service, the restrictions are these specific spoke centers or this specific catchment area, and um, these will be allowed referrals who maybe go straight through the system, and these are restrictions we put on and we, that we need to collect the data to actually allow the transfer to take place. So this is uh, um, our, our landing page that we've developed. It's so we can register or update the service, or you can deactivate one of the services, because obviously if you stop completing that task, if someone leaves your organisation, you want to deactivate the service. And then this is just a basic registration page where you name the service and you're linked to that organisation, specify the specialty, and whether it's an NHS or private service, because one of the ideas we had was linking into vaccination services. And obviously some of those are NHS, some of them just may be private, and then we need to, to look at how we restrict that. So this example is just restricting by two specific GP practices in an area, so that those would be the only ones who would directly be able to refer into the system. And then from the service point of view, we designed sort of an activation, deactivation screen, so you can say, actually, these are our services we're currently running, these are the ones that we're not running at the moment and make it easier to activate services we may have shut down when we maybe have staff back on board. And then when it comes for the spokes who want to connect into a service, we look at um, a, a very, basically a very generic search page. And uh, this, this has slightly progressed since, it, since we initially designed it. So when you search for a specific service, you're presented with a list. It would say, these ones are available for you. Yeah, this is the active GP practice. There and whether they're actually available 
through referral or whether you would have to request access to the service. And, and that's just wrapping up. Just say where we're up to now, we've built a proof of concept system. We're still working on integrating it all together. Uh, the initial database structures built out in MySQL, the back ends uh, in, has been built out on I. There we go. So, any questions? Jill, have you a question? No. no? <laughs> <laughs> or Cheryl, since you haven't asked any questions yet. in relation to this? Well, I, I was thinking about, you know, could a pharmacy use it as a direct referral into another service, so to say, trying to GPs, because there's a lot of GPs being the gateway to things, and I thought it could actually, you know, make the service, the system more efficient if you could allow others, like maybe dentists or conscious pharmacists, to do direct referrals in, and they said they could, because you could... Because you've used, system. you've got the, that you, the, sub, I'm going to say, the, the, the spokes Spokes, yeah. could be GP practices, but the spokes could be community pharmacies, pharmacies but the spokes yeah. could be optometrists, or... It's to, it's to prevent, it's to remove that, you know, NHS only barrier as well, to make it so that someone can refer into a service that they may not be able to, where the service is happy to receive, to receive those referrals. So it's just, it's a platform it's for It's basically a platform to manage, usually services that are very more specialised, that don't actually have a system in place to already cope with. So for GP practice, you will already have some referrals you just go straight out to the organisations to, but for more specialist ones, you may not have that link. Yeah. Uh, I guess you can go uh, first. It's funny, I was just, I'm, I'm, I'm slowly getting my head around what it is. I yeah, talk already. quickly, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, so, just thinking about, you've got, you're, you're a spoke and you've got a choice between these different places to mm -hmm. refer. Um, do you think there would be other categories other than just active or inactive, such as or other other components that you might want to build around that that might help processes? It makes sense to actually, one of the things we're looking at as well is sort of an activation period where, you, where the service may have been active during, so that if you actually can are able to stand up another version of the service, to, uh, you can then activate between a fixed period of time, or you have cover. So we could expand that to say, okay, until we get to a maximum number of referrals and then lock the service off. But again, that could be com that could be configured as part of the um, uh, service configuration. Yeah. Any other questions from judges? No? Andy. Hi, do you think this could be expanded for other types of services? Do you want NHS provider? I'm thinking like if you are um, if you're suffering from uh, lack of ability, like, like me, yeah. I need to do stretching. Yeah. yeah. So instead of going to the GP. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, the way it's built at the moment is very generic. So you, you specify the service on the back end the way we built it. So obviously we're with NHS and private type services, but you could expand that to some of the other services that may be covered as part of a patient's healthcare. I, I don't see that as a limitation anyway. Uh, you mentioned this appeal scene. It's on the skill database. Can you speak up a little bit, sorry? Sorry. Speak up a little bit, sorry. Sorry. Uh, you mentioned it's a POC and it's on the MySQL database with Postgres or something. Yes. Oh, well, it's a MySQL. Okay. Uh, are you a GDS supplier at home? No. In London, we have 33 London boroughs and we have a range of mental health services which turn themselves on and off at a significant rate. <laughs> this is, it's a big problem. One of the challenges of designing something generic is that it's hard to get in practice. So I wondered because people can't instantly see how it works. But although it looks like mental health in London has just instantly seen it, <laughs> yeah. so I just wondered if you thought a little bit about kind of how you might get it out to people and get them enthused enough to. That's always. And I'm tricky. curious, well. just as a side that, like, what made you decide this really needed to be done? What was the pain point for you that you decided to? Well, we were sort of batting around a few ideas before we came there. I had a glass of whiskey and it 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, you never know what the answer's going to be. Yeah, you never know what the answer's going to be. That is very honest to be true. Yeah, I've yeah. seen this pattern. I mean, I've been in um, IT, in healthcare, for 25 years now. And I see this pattern over and over again. It just takes you know, a whiskey to recognise the pattern. <laughs> you need to genericise it so you don't have to reinvent the wheel continually. Yes, mm -hmm. I did spot that and I yeah. thought this would do that. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a thing about where can I send the baby because there isn't just a baby in the course. We didn't have a chance to catch up with that, no, but we did discuss that because this could easily fulfill that with what's yeah. Okay. Mike. Have you heard of uh, in England NHS directory of services? Yes. Yeah. Where, where, do, you think, where do you think where do you think we have discussed this with, with, discuss with this alongside that? with that integrated with that? I'm not sure. I mean, I'm aware of it. I'm also aware that there, there are very small, unique services that may not be covered in that list. And that's where I think this might fit in. There are also services that are almost internal to hospitals that wouldn't technically be, between hospitals that wouldn't technically be covered, but they still need a solution to do that. And like I say, I've seen similar systems, help with similar systems that do that sort of transfer. We try to genericise those a bit at that stage, but it still needs a lot of work every time to make them do whatever you wanted them to do. So, I'm going to... These are going to be the very two last <laughs> questions <laughs> at NHS Hack Day today. Richard. So on that basis, can you, can you, can you federate? I mean, it's something we could always look at. Um, <laughs> well, rather than do it, duplicating what others have already started, right? This yeah. is how you, how you bring these all together. Into one solution. I mean, when I first looked at this, it was almost that we would deliver a platform that other people could use for a task. And then as we discussed it over the past day or so, it, it's more of a, we would like to bring it together as, as, a, as a total solution to be the platform for everything to sit in that is not currently covered by other things. So I, I can see how that, and you could bring some of the solutions already out there on board using the same infrastructure. Jim. Uh, just to pick up on that last comment about the directory of services, that's been around for a while. Mm. The problem is maintaining it. Yeah. Um, within every local body, whether you're in care services or mental or any, any other Yeah, I see this putting the back, back into the people who actually run the services and take it away a bit from that. Because obviously if you're running that service, you know that you, you know, if you're getting requests in and you know that you can't actually cope, you've hit a limit, you can turn the service off at that, at that exact point. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much.